Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about my U.S. General Toolbox. Now this was my second toolbox, no, my third toolbox I purchased. Uh, first one was my Matco, then my Blue International or something, I don't know, I just got rid of it. And then my U.S. General. And um, so anyways, I've had these toolboxes for a long time, and recently with a you know, bunch of moves, it's made things quite difficult with so many toolboxes, and uh, it used to have a lot of room, um, and, you know, I've always kind of thought, you know, maybe I should, you know, consolidate, uh, less, you know, less toolboxes on the floor. Didn't, you know, really wasn't sure. I mean, I, you know, I looked into options and, you know, options were really expensive for, you know, hutches and overhead cabinets and just all kinds of different things. And at my new shop, I found a couple guys and they had this idea where they put U.S. General side lockers on their snap-on boxes and they put a piece of plywood across the top and they made kind of like a little hutch but that's not really what I wanted I wanted like an actual hutch you know when you go look at a hutch it's like two thousand dollars it's got a pegboard in the back you know I mean maybe they come with lights maybe they don't not real sure uh you know and, and I'm not one to go spend a ton of money on tool storage uh, I like functionality, but I don't really care about brands and, and all that stuff. I just want it to be a good, a good quality, whatever it is that I'm, you know, what I'm doing. And so I spent some time, I thought about it, decided to sell my blue box because it was just off to the side. It was in the way. It was constantly getting moved. Uh, all my stuff, I had nowhere to put all my stuff and it just was really, really difficult and it was in the way. And so I decided to, you know, slowly empty it out. I was going to sell it. And then one of my coworkers asked me if I wanted to sell it. And I was like, hey, that's perfect. And so I sold it to him and I went the route that they went, but I didn't, I was going to do it the right way. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I did and how I took two U.S. general uh, side lockers and a little bit of plywood and some pegboard. And I made myself a really nice hutch. I, I actually really like it. Uh, it'll be really nice when it's all done. I have a lot, of, a lot of stuff to do to it, but this is the beginning stages, and this is just to give you an idea. If you can't, can't spend a ton of money and need functionality, or if you just don't want to spend a ton of money on tool storage, hutches, I mean, I think I looked at a, a hutch, it was like two grand uh, for that thing. So anyways, I wasn't spending that. I wasn't even spending $1,000. Uh, and that's just for the hutch. That's not the side lockers. And who, who knows, that may not even come with lights. So I don't have lights or anything like that, but anyways... I've made it work for now. I like it, and uh, it's a work in progress, but let's check it out. All right, here we go. This is my U.S. General Toolbox, right there. That's my regular box that I had. And here is my setup. All right, so what we did here was we built, we put uh, two U.S. General lockers on here. There we go. One on each side. All right. Built a nice frame for the top with some three-quarter inch sanded plywood along the top. Built a couple little cubbies on each side right there. I'm going to put a door that flips up and flips back down to close these off. These are all my training books that I have. Same thing on this side. I'm going to put a door that flips up here as well. Same thing. So we come in on the inside and basically what I did here is I just built a nice frame, attached it to the back. Got some pegboard along the back. So that way, once I figure out how I want to do this, I can put myself some hooks on there and hang things on the back like a regular hutch without spending $2,000. So it gives me a nice little cubby. Drilled a couple, drilled a couple holes. Got this hole here. Drilled this out. I'm gonna put a grommet here. 
to keep the wires to make sure they don't chafe. Got a hook here where I hook my stream light, uh, my stream light headlight, headlamp. Got to build a little platform here to put my phone on when it's charging. Got my tablet charging. A nice little work area. All right, so right here is my other sticker area. I have a lot more room here than on my cart. So if you've sent me two stickers or more than one, you will be on this wall of stickers. We have the heavy wrench, Capri tools, carnage tools, works for tools, one mechanic, and lady welder cat. If you'd like to be on there, send me a sticker. Okay, so we have this platform up top here, and uh, I can use it to store things. Have fender covers there, and this amazing pry bar, my Dominator pry bar, pry bar from Mayhew Tools, stored up there because I don't have anywhere else to put it at the time. Got jackets up there, got my buckets, got my training manuals, got these magnetic trays that I keep there. I finally got them off my cart. I don't really like them that much, but I got them. All right, let's take a look inside. All right, so this top shelf here, this is where all the electrical mess is. I got a hole in the back there where my strip plug goes back to plug in. Got all my USB connectors here that go through the, the, the hole on the side for my different connections. Got my charger there for my uh, snap-on light. Got that and got it all off my toolbox. So it freed up a lot of space. This took up half my toolbox. I got all my 14-4 snap-on chargers there. And uh, in the back, got the container, that biscotti container there. It's full of nuts and bolts and washers for engine stands, for securing engines on engine stands. Uh, and then right over here, I have my Carnage Tools Wi-Fi Boroscope. I don't have room for this stuff in my box, so here we go. Wi-Fi Boroscope, Carnage Tools, my Mac Tools Extractor Set, and my Mac Tools RBRT for Torx. And then we roll down here to a hot mess. All right, so this here is all my different containers that I have to make things easier. I have power steering O-rings. I have this container here in the right front, all kinds of random stuff, a Subaru uh, return line uh, uh, attachment for the power steering pump that always make noise. It's an original one, so it's not gonna make noise. I got a Honda main relay there. I got uh, that pot, that brake, that brake, uh, brake pad box is full of relays and fuses that I strip from Tipums. I got clamps to hold belts and things like that, and I got a lot of room here. So I'm going to build a couple shelves with some pullout drawers for my different containers here, so I could see them as I pull them out. Now we roll into the bottom drawer. And this one in the back here, inside this uh, wonderful, uh, I don't know, dollar store bag, has all kinds of uh, transmission end plugs. This is to plug the end of the tail shaft, so you don't get a transmission bath when you're tipping the tranny back. Plus a couple different boxes of gloves. Let's see what else we have. On to the other side. Alright, so on this side, it's a little bit different. Can't really do a whole lot because of that map gas torch that I have. It sits up quite tall, and I don't know that I could make anything different in here except for I could maybe add a small shelf, but there really isn't a whole lot of room. I have the propane enhancer right there on the right for checking for vacuum leaks without using brake clean, setting it on fire. I got the grease, air tool oil. I got a couple uh, spray bottles. And there I got all my funnels and little suckers for sucking fluid out of master cylinders or fuel filter bowls on 7.3 and things like that. I got a, uh, here, we got the block tester. Did a video about this one here. This is what I recommend, this U-View. It's got a dual chamber. You can see from the picture, the left side is a gas. Gas turns yellow when it's blown. Diesel turns green. Right there, got the two chamber. Got the fluid. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you get one. This one here, I got this from my friends at Mayhew. I haven't had a chance to do a, a review on this one yet. I was hoping to actually try it out. I haven't had any tie rods yet. Before I got this, I was doing tie rods galore. 
So this is a three piece set here. So you got one that goes from inch and an eighth to inch and five sixteenths, inch and five sixteenths to inch and nine sixteenths, and inch and nine sixteenths to inch and three quarters. So this one here, it's a pretty heavy tool here. Diagnostic Dentist posts something about one of these. He has one adapter, he doesn't have all three. So this is what it looks like, Dennis. Uh, so there's the end right there. And all you do, you got the snap ring to hold it in place. You got the three different adapters. Pop this in, put it on. And it's got a big, uh, for a socket on the end. Break it free with a with an impact gun or a ratchet. Whatever works. That's what we got in there. Oh, uh, one of the things that you have to do with these U.S. General side lockers is this here, this corner here. This comes all the way over to here. And what happens is you have to open this door all the way before you can open the drawer. So if you're gonna get one of these, you wanna cut this off at an angle. So that way you can still open this drawer when the door isn't all the way closed. I mean, all the way open. So you can see how I have it most of the way. It's open a little more than half. Able to get it in there. All right. So in here we have my uh, my brake uh, caliper depressor for a single for a single piston gun. Got this one for the dual piston. Got the micrometer for measuring the brakes. I get mine at Home Depot because you can see how I cut open. I ground open a center in the middle right here. So if the rotor has a lip on it, it'll go around the lip and still measure the rotor. It's digital. You can switch it from metric to standard. Uh, standard with a decimal or standard with, fract standard with fractions. Uh, a couple brake tools here. Got this guy right here for biting down on springs to pull the spring. Got this one right here for releasing the parking brake spring from the shoe. Got this guy here for pushing in the clip and turning the uh, and turning the um, the pin the anchor pin this one here I had to grind it off it was actually a square at the end this is for the the GM's that uses a Torx for the the um, for the wheel cylinder it's really hard to get in there there's like no room so actually what I always do is I use this to take them out and then I actually find two 10 millimeters and I throw the Torx in the garbage and I put the tens back in. But you gotta, if you don't have these, these corners ground down, you can't turn this. Barely fits in there. Now these are pretty cool right here. So you have the horseshoe for retaining the parking brake, for retaining the brake shoe to the, to the parking brake uh, arm. And this one here, what it does is it opens up the horseshoe and then you use a, you use a screwdriver to pop it out. And then this one here, has grooves right there grooves right there on each side and this is for grabbing the horseshoe and squeezing it used to do a lot of drum brakes back in the day so makes things real easy there so this is all of my brake stuff the only thing that's not in here is my is my drum brake micrometer it won't fit in here so that's that drawer come up here and in here, all I have in here, I have some powder back there for your hands sometimes. When you're sweaty, you gotta put gloves on. Got some uh, battery protectant and, uh, and cleaner, lithium grease. And then a bunch of random stuff. Got some uh, assembly lube. You got some yellow glue, some black glue. You got the, uh, uh, this stuff right here, graphite for the lock cylinders. Put them in there. I still have to get a container and figure all this out. Uh, just a bunch of uh, containers measuring oil on AC compressors and things like that and then this one here we don't use this very often because I use my airlift but you got the funnel here 
The newer funnels, they make newer funnels that are clear so you can see better. And they also, uh, some of them actually have a built-in plunger, which I don't, I don't like. I don't recommend that one, but uh, they make it. So up here, I'm gonna roll in here. You got the bearing packer. The shop always has one, but I like to have my own. Obviously I work on Power Stroke, so we got multiple different kinds of uh, RTV. We got the RTV for the 7.3. We got the RTV for the 6.7s. Got a container back there. And this, did a video about this right there for, uh, for servicing your cordless tools. I keep it in that little container because it falls over. Uh, this right here, talked about this in a 7.3 video. Use this assembly goo right here. This works really good for holding the uh, the combustion sealing washer on injectors. And then back there you got the little gun for injecting oil. Uh, this works good for uh, O-rings. Um, when I'm doing diesels, I'll take this and I'll just use this to uh, to lubricate all the O-rings or, um, or head bolts that need to be lubricated. And then you just got a whole bunch of different kinds of RTV, some Silglide. Uh, this stuff right here works really good for O-rings. You want to use that stuff right there. Silglide, Napa. I've been using that for years. So you definitely want that. Uh, you got the Lowe's buckets. Keep these. These are really good for mixing coolant when you have to use your airlift. Or if you have a diesel, if you have a power stroke, these fit perfectly under the truck if they're stock most of the time and can drain the radiator in there and it holds five gallons. So you can hold pretty much the whole cooling system in one bucket. Works really good there. Wow, this is a really good tool right here. If you don't have one of these, you want to buy one of these. A thread insert riveter. I had a, a E150 recently where the, the rivets in the back of the, um, above the, the cab were loose and I had to grind off the screws that held the third brake light on. We use this to put new rivets back in and put new screws in and everything was good. So if you don't have one of those, you definitely need to get one of those. Uh, back over here, a couple little things to point out. If you're working on AC, make sure you keep your own container of O-rings. Anytime you get an AC kit with O-rings, make sure that you um, keep all your old O-rings. So you don't have to go back to the, to the counter and go in all the containers, just dump these out in a rag. And uh, the other thing that you want to make sure of is that you keep a container of, uh, of all the Schrader valves. This is full of Schrader valves. I just have a couple uh, plastic uh, nozzle tips on there. Uh, let's see, cotter pins, some alligator clips, things like that. Uh, of course, in here is where I charge my Observer Tools flashlight charge that right here with the USB come on the side over here I have my backup stream light flashlight right there you always need a backup flashlight just in case I keep the fuel pressure gauge hanging make it easy to get to I have my different adapters but that way the fuel gauge is there it's easy it hangs everything drips out of it got an extra air hose here little drop cord. Uh, of course, I just bought a new one of these. This is the Lyle stethoscope. Recommend this one. This is a really good one. Um, this one comes with a lot of attachments. I had this one recently and it hung on my cart and I lost one of these little rubber nipples and so I had to throw it away and buy a new one. So, 20 bucks down the drain. Uh, and then back here, we just have uh, the brake flush tool use that this is something that you need right here this this kneeling pad this works really good for diesels you lay this across the hood the hood latch and that way it doesn't stab you in the stomach it works really good along doors because it it stretches the whole length of the door so you can move side to side and you don't have to move the pad recommend one of these from snap-on uh, let's see what else we got over here we got my uh, 
just my bolt cart here, all my random bolts and nuts. Work on diesel, so obviously I have a container of def fluid. Uh, a couple jack stands that I keep down here and an old pair of boots because sometimes insoles, soles come off of boots and things like that happen. Uh, let's see, what else we have here? Uh, the other thing that goes in here is a bag full of engine uh, hanging and hoist brackets and bolts, nuts, chains. I have another chain here. Here's my chain that's not in there. This one here is really good. These, these ends unscrew, these come off. And uh, this hook right here is perfect because the chain sits down in this and the, and the engine doesn't move. So if you don't have this, sometimes your engine will slide on your chain. So I recommend this specific one right here. I'll try, I'll try to put a link in the description below for this chain. I got this on Amazon. It works really good. I like that. So let's come over here and get another look. Now normally I think that this, uh, I think that this hutch, a hutch for this thing is like $2,000. I definitely did not pay $2,000 and I like it a lot. I think it turned out really nice. And I will update another video later as I get this uh, start to be built. Trying to make sure I get everything exactly how I want it. Gonna get a nice light kit for this thing. I'd really like to get a light kit that, that goes up here. And then also something inside the door, inside the, the lockers. So I can see inside the lockers and I don't have to use a flashlight. So. Oh yeah, of course I have, uh, the last thing in here is some Marvel mystery oil. This thing really is mystery oil. It is magic, I'm telling you. If you have an engine noise, try that out. May not work, but there's a pretty good chance it will. You have lifters that won't pump up after you get done doing heads or, or an engine or anything like that. Put some Marvel's Mystery Oil in there. It works out great. Another thing that you got to do is you got to go to Costco, all right, and get yourself some biscotti. Then when you're done, you bring the container in here and you hold all your vacuum caps, your plastic rubber caps. I use these when I do engines and things like that to cap off uh, transmission fluid. Uh, of course, we'll come along here and we got the paint markers. Obviously, we have the paint markers. You know, I love my paint markers. Uh, and then a bunch of different highlighters, uh, some hanging wire. Sometimes you got to use this to hang a radiator uh, on, some, on some vehicles. Uh, that's about it. Oh, yeah. The handy dandy stapler. Keep all the paperwork together. And uh, so that is a tour of what I've been working on with my US General toolbox. Now this is something you won't see anymore. ASE recertified or certified metal magnets. Back in the day, when you recerted your ASEs, you would get a magnet. So those three are for my regular ASEs. And then these are for L1 and L2. I've had L3, I've had L1 for three different times. So I've had to research that three times and I've had my L2 for a while. So I've researched that twice. So you won't see those anymore. And we'll just end right there. I love this setup. It works great. If you have any questions on how to make yourself a hutch for less than $100 probably. Well, right now, the plywood was really expensive because of COVID, but probably around a hundred bucks or so, I built this whole thing. So it works really good. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for checking out my US General built from scratch hutch. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know that there's still a lot more of the US General box that uh, you'd probably like to see, and I'll take you on a tour once we get there. But for now, showed you the hutch, showed you what's possible, and maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I don't know. I built it for me. I didn't build it for anybody else.
but I thought I would get, get it out there and show you guys because I think it's a pretty darn good idea. You know, maybe you could do things a little bit different. Uh, oh, the other reason that I that I built those those little cabinet, I didn't talk about this, but the reason I put those little, uh, the cabinets on each side, the little cubby, the reason I did that was because the hutch was going to be too low. Uh, my neighbor who did the same thing, just a piece of plywood on top of his um, side lockers, but he did, what he did was he actually put big old giant blocks uh, above, in between his wheels and his snap-on toolbox. I didn't want to do that because then, you know, then you just mess up the integrity of the whole platform and I didn't want to do that. And so I needed to make it taller without being just dumb and, you know, wasted space. And so that's why I built those little cubbies was to at least have a place to put something uh, to be able to raise it up. So it was a perfect height for when I go in there and I, you know, maybe I have my computer in there. I'll probably have my computer in there eventually, uh, things like that. But anyways, so thank you very much for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell. You get notified of all of my future content, which in the future will be an updated video of what this looks like once I get it all fixed, once I build the shelves, once I build the doors, get some lights, and then I will actually take you inside the U.S. General Box where I have a really nice diesel drawer. So thanks for checking me out. Check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for the daily life as a mechanic. Gas, diesel, funky stuff, tools, whatever. Boring stuff, gravy, whatever. We talk about it all. So anyways, thanks for checking it out. See you next time.